Hello everyone, I am Vibhor Singh and today we will be discussing the 23rd problem of the CP31 sheet by TLE animators under 1300 rated parameter. So as you can see this is the CP31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected and this is the 23rd problem product of three numbers. You are given one integer number n, find three distinct integers a, b, c such that 2 is like a, b, c is greater than or equal to 2 and a into b into c is equal to n or say that it is impossible to do so and if there are several answers you can print any of the answers okay and then you have to do it for t independent test cases so basically you are given one integer for each test case you are given one integer n so let's say let's take the first example where n is given as 64 okay now you need to print three numbers a comma b comma c such that they are all three distinct and they are greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so they are all three distinct and they are greater than or equal to 2. So you are given this and a into b into c is equal to n and n in our case is 64. So this is n, right? 64 is n. So one example of this is given as we can take a as 2, b as 4 and c as 8. So 2 into 4 gives me 8 and then 8 into 8 gives me 64, right? So that is one possible example since all three numbers 2, 4 and 8 are distinct and their product is 64, I can print them. And as you can see, the answer is given as yes and then 2, 4 and 8, right? But if we have something like 32, then the answer is given as no, where we cannot find three numbers, three distinct numbers whose product would be 32, okay? So I hope the problem statement is clear. Now let's discuss the expected time complexity. So we are given the number of test cases as 100 and then we are given that n can go till 10 raised to 9. Now we know 1 second on code forces corresponds to approximately 10 raised to 8 operations. We are given number of test cases as 100 and n can go till 10 raised to 9. So we know anything of the order of n or something will give us TLE, right? But something we have to form a solution in order of something like t into log n or even order of t into square root of n. Something like this should give us fine or should work fine. But if we go something of sort of order of n or order of n square, this will give us TLE. So we can find the upper bound as something like in square root of n or order of log n, we have to solve the problem, right? So now let's try to solve the problem. Now we know a, b and c are three distinct numbers, right? A, B, C are three distinct numbers. So for now, let's just assume that A will be the smallest of the numbers, then there will be B and then C would be the largest of the three numbers that we want to print. So I'll try to find A, B and C in, or I'll try to, I can just sort the three numbers that I get or I want to print as A, B and C, A would be the smallest, B would be second smallest and C would be the largest number, okay? So this is the first thing I can do to get some, uh, just, just to get a better understanding or just to get a, clarity of first I'll be looking for a or the smallest number would be a right now another thing that we can do see is that since a into b into c is equal to n all three are factors of n right so a b and c all three are factors of n right I hope this part is clear because the product is n so we know that a b c would be the factors of n and I am also looking at A would be the smallest fact, smallest number than B than C. So don't you think I should try to minimize the value of A that is whatever smallest value of the three is there. I should try to minimize this value. Whatever la largest value C is there. I want to maximize the value. See, basically the product is given as N. Okay. So anything like we have, let's say three into five into seven. Okay. This is our N. Okay. So for this, I'm getting my A, B and C, right? So if I had something of the other sort, let's say instead of 7, this was 14. Then instead of trying to choose 3, 5 and 14, I would try to choose something like 2 into 3 into 35. That will remain, right? A factor of 7 and factor of 5, right? Basically, I can do is I will try to minimize A and I will try to maximize C. Now, why are we doing this or what? Like, why are we doing this or how is this helping us solve the problem? 
let's see the example of 64 that is there in the problem okay 64 can be written in the powers of 2 right it can be written in the powers of 2 as 2 raised to 6 now i want to choose a b and c from such that the product will give me 64 right the product will give me 64 so i know only powers of 2 will divide 64 so a, B and C can also be represented in powers of 2, right? I cannot have any other factor in it, right? I cannot have a factor of 3 or factor of 5 in any number that gives the product to 64. So I'll have 2 raised to, let's say, uh, X of A into B would be 2 raised to X of B into 2 raised to X of C. Now, what I was saying was, we should try to minimize this value and maximize this value at the same time. How is this helping us? See, if in our answer we have seen that our product for this example would be 2 into 4 into 8 or the values of A and B would be A, B, C would be 2, 4 and 8, right? Now, over here you can see that X of A is 1, X of A is 1, X of B is 2 and X of C is 3. So, not very important to look at the powers but we can have to make sure that these values are a is minimized and C is maximized. Let's say I don't do this. Okay, let's say I don't do this. Instead, I choose A to be a larger value. That is, I'll take A as 4 itself. And then I'll try to form B and C. Now, I know B should be greater than 4, right? So, I can take the next product or next divisor of 64, right? That would be 8, right? 8 would be another factor. Now, 4 into 8 gives me 32 already. So, can I get another value C? which would be greater than 8 such that it would make it to 64. Is it possible? Like 32 into some value C would give me 64, but that value should also be greater than 8. That's not possible, right? So to give us maximum room to find C, we should make our A minimum. And to ensure that we can find B if it exists, we should try to maximize our C. Or another way to write is it, write it is, a would just be the smallest factor of n, right? Then once we have a, n by a remains with us, right? Now we have to find b into c, b into c such that both b and c are greater than a and their product is equal to n by a, right? So I want to maximize c, right? I was saying that I want to maximize c. So to maximize C, I can just minimize B, right? That is, B would be smallest factor of N by A. So I can just choose A to be the smallest factor of N and I can choose B to be the smallest factor of N by A and whatever remains, that is, whatever remains out of N, that is, N divided by uh, a into B is what will be my C, right? So this way I can just try to minimize my A and maximize my C and get a definite answer if it exists, right? We're minimizing and maximizing A and C just to make sure we get an answer. And how are we doing that? We're choosing A to be the smallest factor of A. So that's the smallest value of A we can get. We have minimized A and then we're choosing B as the second smallest factor or we're choosing B as the smallest factor of N by A, right? Smallest factor of n by a, which is greater than a, right? There's another condition to it, which is greater than a, right? We won't choose a again. Basically, if we have something like 4, or even if we have the case of 64, our a became 2, right? a became 2. After that, b would be 4. b won't be 2 again. So, b is not the smallest factor of n by a. b is the smallest factor of n by a that is greater than a, okay? So, I hope this part is clear that how we are selecting a and b and why we are selecting this. So, after this, you've gotten three values, A, B, and C, right? But are we always guaranteed these three values is the first question. And second question is, even when we get these three values, are we guaranteed a correct answer? So let's try to see the first case where, let's say we don't even get A and B as two factors. That is, we have something like a prime number, let's say seven, right? So for N equal to seven or N equal to some prime, 
I know I have to print a no, right? Because I cannot find three numbers whose product will give me a prime, right? So this is a very basic case for a prime number. We'll have no, right? N is prime. So this is the first case that we'll handle. Now the second case that we can handle is that a product or uh, the number has only two factors. Okay, so N has only two factors other than one and n. Okay, so we are looking at factors other than one and n itself. So n has only two factors other than one and n itself. So like, let's look at a number something like 15. Okay, n is equal to 15. So we would get two factors as three and five, right? So using our initial method that a is the smallest factor of n and then b is the smallest factor of n by a, that is greater than a, I will get a as three and b as five, right? But what will my c become? C is n upon a into b, right? Which is 15 upon 3 into 5, which will give me 1, right? So my a becomes 3, my b becomes 5, and my c becomes 1. Now I know my a, b, and c should all be greater than or equal to 2, and also have the inequality that a less than b less than c, right? Something like that. So I know over here I am violating the condition in the question, and I cannot print three distinct numbers greater than or equal to 2 for 15 whose product would be 15, right? So if n has only two factors, then I have to print a no again. So even this is a case of no. And how are we finding this case or how can we flag this case? See, first case we flag, we won't even get two primes. We won't get a and b, right? Or we won't even get two factors rather. We won't even get a and b, that is n is prime. So we got a no. Now this case we can flag very simply by if c is 1, if c is 1, then my answer is no, right? If c is 1, then my answer is no. So these are two cases that we handle. Another case that we need to look at, see, we are given that A, B and C should be distinct, right? Now on B, we have already put a condition that B would be greater than A, right? Because why? Because we are choosing B to be the smallest factor of N by A that is greater than A, right? So B is greater than A, we have already satisfied this. So B would not be equal to A, right? But C can be equal to any of these two values, right? C can be equal to any of these two values. Let's try to understand how. See, let's look at an example of n is equal to 32. Okay. First, we'll choose A, right? A would be the smallest factor, which will become 2. We Then we choose the next smallest factor for B. So 2 is A. Then my B becomes 4, right? B becomes 4. Now, my C is 32 upon 2 into 4, right? That is 32 n by... Uh, a into b, right? n by a into b. So this thing becomes 4. So in this case, my c is equal to b, right? Whatever c I'm getting is equal to b. So even for this case, I cannot print 2, 4, 4, right? So from here also, I'm getting an idea that, okay, for even such a case where my c is either equal to b or c is equal to a, if I'm getting the remainder c as equal to a or b, any of these two values, then also my answer should be no. So these are some, these are three different cases where we will get no. Okay. First case is where we get a prime number. That is, we won't even get two factors. Second case is where we have only, n has only two factors, something like 15, right? So in this case, we'll be able to flag it easily when our C is one. That is, if my C value is one, I have to print a no. And in the third case is, if my C value is equal to B or equal to A, whatever I've chosen till now. I know my answer will become no since I've already minimized A and maximized C. So if there would have been a possible answer such that C would not be equal, equal to A or B, then we would have found it. And if C is B equal to B or equal to A, then it means we cannot find a possible answer. So our answer would be no. So that's it for the problem. Let's discuss the code. So over here, first we take the test cases as input and then for each test case, we take n as the number as input and we form a vector of factors, right? Now my factors, why have I formed a vector? Because we'll be requiring two factors. So I'm just pushing back those two factors that is a and b in this vector. Okay. Then I'm choosing, I'm starting i from two. Why am I starting i from two? Because I don't want to start from one. I don't want to see one as a factor right now because a, b and c should all be greater than or equal to two, right? They cannot be one. So that is why I'm starting i from two i into i less than equal to n, very basic uh, way of calculating primes or calculating factors rather 
in root n complexity this loop will run in root n i into i less than equal to n i plus plus and then if n modulo i is not equal to zero i'm just doing continue to uh, ignore all the non factors and then if factors if like this condition is false then i is a factor right so if i is a factor then in the factors i'm pushing back i so first i'll push back a then i'm making n is e n divide equal to i so basically when when i'll get a so first i'll get a then i'll get i'll update my n value to be n by a right and then next time when i come in this loop i'll get b i'll push back b and then i'll make n by a i'll again divide it by b right so it will become my in new value of n will become n by a into b okay so i hope this is clear why i'm doing n by equal to i and then if my factor size is 2 that is i've gotten a and b in my vector then i'm breaking so this is what i'm doing in this entire loop note that we will get one factor only once right so if i have like even the example of 64 when i'll come at 2 i'll push back 2 and then my new n value will become 32 right then i will reach to 4 when then i'll push back 4 and then my new value of n will become 32 by 4 which will become 8 so my n represents c at the end right so at the end of the loop my n represents c so for that now i'll put the three conditions that is if first condition was if it is a prime that is i won't even get two factors right if i won't even get two factors or even if it's a perfect square i'll get only one one factor that is also one case like if we have nine we'll get only one factor that is three or only one unique factor that is three so that is why in factors i'll uh, if factor size is less than 2 that is one condition for no another condition for no is that n becomes one at the end right that is we have only two factors and the third condition was n is either equal to a or n is equal to b so if n is equal to a or b so either of these conditions is true we will print no otherwise we will print yes then we will print a which is factors of 0 b factors of 1 and n which represents c currently right because we are dividing n each time we are pushing back a and b so i hope the solution is clear now let's discuss the time complexity of the solution so for each test case we are running this for loop which runs in order of square root of n right so this is the only for loop in our entire code so overall time complexity of this solution will become order of t into square root of n right and then for the space complexity see we are taking n as input which is like constant space now even our factors although it's a vector maximum size we'll ever get is 2 right we are just looking at a and b we are just pushing back two values first a and then b right we, we need not even create a vector so it's like pretty much constant space because we are pushing back only two values at max so our space complexity will also become order of 1 so i hope the overall solution is clear to you thank you